Well, hey, what's up guys? My name is Ed and welcome to my channel. Listen, today we are talking about my top 10 tips for maximizing your credit cards. That's right, my top 10 tips for how to use credit cards well. There is a right way to use credit cards and there is definitely a wrong way to use credit cards. And today we are talking about the right way to do it, but not only just the right way, but the way to literally maximize the rewards you are getting back from just putting your purchases on a credit card. Hey, listen, if you like the idea of maximizing your credit card perks, if you like traveling for free, if you like cash back, if you like managing your money better, you have found the right channel. Just go ahead, do me a favor, right below this video, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the bell notification. Hitting that like button is the easiest, most simple way you can help support the channel, help make sure this content gets to more people. So go ahead and do that, and let's get into the video. All right, my top 10 tips for maximizing credit card points. Number one, become financially responsible without credit cards. Listen, I gotta ask you, do you have a budget? Do you stick to that budget? Do you find yourself struggling to stick to that budget? If you wanna get into the credit card game, if you wanna be able to maximize the benefits that credit cards give you, if you don't wanna fall into the traps that other people do with credit cards, you have to learn to be financially literate, financially responsible without them. And so I would say if you do not have a budget yet, the best place you can start today is just get one. And so for me, I'm a man of faith, so I give away 10% of my income, I save 10% of my income, and then I live on 80%. So that is like a really basic budget strategy that I employ, and I'd encourage you to, you to employ it as well. But for me, once I started to become financially literate, then I was able to move into this place of, I'm not gonna fall into the traps of credit cards, which can be spending more than you have, uh, spending money that you, you, know, you can't pay it off and you have to carry over the balance and you're paying month to month interest. Yeah, if you are already financially responsible, it sets you up for success in the credit card game. So if you are financially responsible, if you have a budget, if you stick to it, if you really feel like you are good with your money, I think you are someone who's in good position to use and maximize credit cards. But if you are somebody who struggles with your spending, who is constantly doing impulse purchases, who can't really control themselves and, and is constantly spending, 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 I'm not sure if credit cards is right for you. It'd be like giving alcohol to an alcoholic. And so if you want to get into the credit card game, the very first step is get financially responsible, do whatever that takes, get a budget, stick to that budget, find a good way to track it, find an app, have a spreadsheet, whatever works for you, but do that first. Number two, do not spend money you do not have. Okay, if you get a credit card and it gives you a $500 limit, this does not mean that you have 500 extra dollars to spend in your life. No, this is just a normal way to spend or make a purchase that you would normally otherwise already be making. And so this isn't 500 extra dollars, this is just a $500 limit to spend on $500 worth of spend you were going to do anyways. That is the best way that you can use credit cards is use it to make purchases that you were going to make anyways. I'm not trying to get into the credit card game to force me to spend more or to spend money I do not have or to make stupid purchases. No, I want to use my card to make purchases I'm already planning on making and then reap the benefits that come alongside that. Listen, a credit card is not extra money. It's not free money. It's not money you can do whatever you want with. This is a limit tied to your name, a piece of plastic tied to your name. And it's just a different way to spend your money. If I have to make a purchase that costs $20, right? If I got to fill up my gas tank, I'm gonna spend that money either way. I'm either gonna use cash, I'm gonna use a debit card, or now I can use my credit card and then the money that I was going to spend anyways, I'll just pay off the credit card. If I can do that, then I actually gain in that transaction because I'm gonna get money back from the credit card issuer. So it is all about making purchases you are already planning to make anyways and do not spend what you do not have. All right, point number three. This is building off points one and two. Pay off your balance monthly. That's right, pay off your balance monthly. Listen, if you have a budget, if you're not spending money you don't have, 
If you know where your money's going and you're using credit cards to make purchases that you were already planning on making anyways, that means that money is always gonna be in your account to pay for the things you use your card for. That means pay it off on time. Pay it off this month and do not let those charges carry over to the next month. Just a little credit card 101 lingo here. Your statement is going to be an email or a paper document that comes to you every month telling you how much you owe on your card, how much you spent on that card this month and how much you owe. How much you owe is going to be called your statement balance. And you are gonna get an option. Do you wanna pay that statement balance off in full or do you wanna make a minimum payment, a minimum contribution towards paying off that statement balance? You never wanna make this minimum payment because that means that the amount you have put on this card, the amount you owe to the credit card company is gonna carry over to the next month. You're gonna carry over that balance and you're gonna get charged interest on that money. And so the following month, you're gonna owe more and a large portion of that is gonna be interest. Listen, interest rates are crazy in the credit card game, all right? This is typically called your APR or annual percentage rate, and they can be north of 20, 30% sometimes, and you will get dragged through the coals and pay money that you do not want to pay the credit card company just because you carried a balance. But like we said, if you're following your budget, if you're only spending money that you were gonna spend anyways, you should have that money available and you can pay off your statement in full every single month. A few other things related to this. When I'm signing up for a card, it does not matter what they're marketing to me regarding the APR. Some cards will offer 0% APR for the first 12 months or whatever the case may be. That doesn't matter to me because I'm never gonna carry a balance, so the interest is never gonna affect me. They're marketing a 0% interest as something good for me, like carry a balance, it's okay, you don't have to pay it for the first 12 months. But then month 13 comes, you still didn't pay it off because you've fallen into this habit over the first 12 months, and then you have a lot of interest that hits in month 13. Or on the flip side, whenever you see that an APR is 20, 30%, whatever the case may be, that doesn't matter to me either because I'm never gonna pay it, you're never gonna pay it because you're smart with your money, you don't spend money you don't have and you're gonna pay it off in full. So at the end of the day, end of the day if you are paying it off in full, interest rates do not matter. And can I say one more thing? Carrying a balance is bad. I, I feel like I have to say this, carrying a balance from one month to the next is bad. And here's why I need to highlight this, is because there is a myth that carrying a balance from month to month will actually help your credit score. And I want to tell you that is not correct. Okay, I did a video on how to increase your credit score using credit cards. I'm gonna mention it a few times in this video. I'm gonna link it in the description. But carrying a balance does not help your credit score. All right, there are other ways that you can help your credit score using credit cards. And one of the best ways is paying off your card on time every single month. Number four, stay organized. That's right, stay organized. If you have one card, okay, you can manage that. You can maybe even memorize the numbers. I mean, you know the, the perks it's gonna get. Uh, you know your limit really easily. Like, you know all the details around one card. Two cards, maybe. You can manage that. You can know if this card is better for X or this card is better for Y. You can potentially manage two cards. When you get three or more credit cards, you gotta start having a way to manage this. And so I have really four things within point four here, four ways that I wanna encourage you to stay organized. The first one, we'll call it 4A, is to have a spreadsheet. My spreadsheet talks the name of the card, the date applied, the date approved, uh, the annual fee, the main perks of the cards, the main multipliers of the cards, the intro bonus requirement, and just a few other notes or details that I really need to highlight. But this spreadsheet is gonna come in handy a, a ton, okay? Especially if you want to apply for a lot of cards in the long run, knowing when you sign up for a card is everything in the credit card game. You wanna space these out. Many issuers have hidden rules about when they will approve you based on the other card 
requests that you've done, applications you've done in the past. So keeping a spreadsheet is a great way to track everything in just a central location. It's not your go-to organizational place, but just a master list of all the details you need to know about your carts. The second way you can stay organized is to have a quick, accessible note in your phone. So this note can really say whatever you want to say, but mine says a few things. Mine tells me what card should I be using right now, because typically I'm trying to get an intro bonus and my wife is involved with this too and she can't keep track of all of it. So I have right at the top, what is the card we should be using right now? We have the numbers there. It's a locked note in our phone. And so this is something that we can easily find what card am I supposed to be using right now? Also in this note is what intro bonus am I trying to earn? Do I need to spend $3,000 in the next four months? Do I need to spend $5,000 in the next six months? I wanna know that and I wanna kinda of have it on my radar and I'm gonna just kinda of keep general track of my spending on this card so I know am I close or am I at least on track to hitting the intro bonus. I have another part of this note that says, hey, based on the cards I have, what should I be using where? Like for gas stations or entertainment or travel or where this specific airline, whatever the case may be, the note kind of has that just really quick accessible breakdown. And then it also tells me, do I have any outstanding perks right now that I need to remember to use? And those could be monthly perks, yearly perks, uh, quarterly, whatever the case may be. But I have them in that note so I can just remember, hey, don't forget, use this perk, maximize your rewards. The third way to stay organized is to have a good credit card app. Now there is a few out there. One that is brand new that I've never used that is really even invite only right now is the points guy who's just releasing his app. Uh, so I can't really speak to it because it's not fully available to the masses yet, uh, but it seems like it's gonna be good. One very similar to that is Max Rewards. This is a highly popular app in the YouTube financial space, especially with credit cards. You link your credit card accounts, it pulls in, the cards linked to your account, all the details related to those cards, and just helps you keep it all on track of when is a payment coming up and what kind of purchases have been made on your, all your cards, um, when you apply for them. All these things are kind of just pulled in, all this information pulled in. I've had trouble with this app because sometimes linking to my accounts just doesn't work. And I, I haven't heard this a lot, but I've had this problem myself. So it, it could just be my issue. Uh, but yeah, my linking with my accounts sometimes doesn't work properly or it, it'll unlink or whatever the case may be. But Max Rewards can be a great app. Another one is Card Pointers. I really like this one because it doesn't require you to link your accounts. You just tell it what cards you have and it just knows what perks are available to that card. and So it tells you all the same information with the exception of your specific limit, your specific purchases. So this app is really just about focusing on what card should I be using where. And I really like it, that's card pointers. The fourth way to stay organized isn't as much about credit cards, but just in general, is have a good password manager app. So your smartphone probably already has some password managing built into it. So if you have nothing, use that. Now I like the app One Password. I highly recommend it. I, I've been using it myself for a number of years and it's just a really great app to have different passwords for all of my accounts, be able to save them. You can embed two-factor auth authentication in it. It's really, really helpful and I have it on all my devices, whether it's on my iPhone or iPad or my Mac or a PC. I have it everywhere and it's super great. I had a friend recently who one of his financial accounts got hacked and he lost $20,000. And so make sure that you have different passwords for all of your accounts for everything you use on the internet, but definitely your financial accounts, definitely your different credit card issuer accounts. Number five, do not be afraid of cards with annual fees, but have a plan. All right, listen, there are a ton of great cards with no annual fees. I have a ton. There are some great cards that are staples in my wallet, the City Double Cash, the Chase Freedom Flex. These are amazing cards. They have no annual fee. And there are strategies out there among credit card enthusiasts to only have cards that have $0 annual fees. And I'm not against these strategies. They can be awesome. They can be amazing and you can get a lot of benefit from them. But I wanna tell you, do not be afraid of annual fees because most likely a card with an annual fee is gonna have greater benefits, greater perks, greater intro bonuses than a card with no annual fee. 
And so you can get that card with the annual fee, but just make sure you have a plan for where you're going with that card. What do I mean with the plan? Well, do the math. Does this card make sense for you long term? You're going to get value in year one because you're going to hit the intro bonus and you're going to get all of those points. But does it make sense in year two or year three or year four? And so it might not, but it potentially does. If it does, it's a good card to get. So for us, the Southwest cards on Chase, they have annual fees, but you also get anniversary points related to just owning that card. And from my perspective, the amount of points you get pretty much offsets the annual fees. We fly Southwest a ton, so these cards make sense for us to own. It would not make sense for me to get a card based on Delta because I don't fly Delta a ton. So I might get the, the bonus in year one, it's gonna be still valuable for me, but in year two, three, four, it, it might not. And so for me right now, that card just does not make sense. Another way you can just kind of do your research about a long-term plan is does this card have a downgrade path or what's called a product change path? Many card issuers will let you change your card to a different card in their ecosystem, no questions asked. And so maybe you're the type of person that's gonna get the Chase Sapphire Reserve and you're gonna pay the $550 annual fee, you're gonna get that first year benefit, first year bonus, and then you go into year two, and then you go into year three, and you're like, hey, this card isn't really benefiting me that much more. So then you just message up Chase and say, hey, I wanna product change this to the Chase Freedom Flex, and that gets you a card that is zero annual fee and it keeps that line of credit open, which is huge for your credit. So you just need to know, do you have a plan? Worst case, you can dis discuss the idea of canceling your card, uh, but that is an absolute worst case scenario. You don't wanna go down that path ideally because of the hit your credit will take by closing an account. So you just wanna know, do I have a plan to best use this card? Number six. Credit cards can help your credit. Now, I did a full video on this, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time. I'll have the video up here, and I'll have it in the description below. But listen, credit cards can help your credit if you use them wisely. There's a lot of things that go into accounting for your credit score, but credit cards can help you by giving you increased limits to, for the total amount of credit available to you. You can use less of that to lessen your credit utilization. You can pay off the cards on time to get a good history of owning the cards. But there are so many ways that you can use credit cards wisely that is going to help your credit score. If you wanna know more, watch the video in the description below. But maximize your use of credit cards to increase your credit score. Number seven is that sign-up bonuses are king. These are the best way to get value, the best way to get positive value from owning this card is hit that sign up bonus. And you need to make sure, can I hit the sign up bonus through my ordinary natural spending? I don't need to spend money that I do not have. I, do need to not, I don't need to make other big and necessary purchases just to hit this bonus, no. Can I hit this bonus just by using this card on purchases that I was going to make anyways? If the answer is yes, great get that card and maximize the value by what you're gonna get back from that sign up bonus. But make sure you can hit it, and if you can, it's pretty easy to pull the trigger on that card, especially if there's no annual fee, especially if there's a downgrade path. It just makes it simple, easy. Get the big bonus. You'll deal with whether you should keep the card long-term in the future. Number eight is pause getting a new card or even applying for a new card before you're about to get a mortgage or before you're about to get an auto loan. Listen, banks don't wanna see that you're applying for a ton of new lines of credit right before they're about to lend you a ton of money. So all you gotta do is just put a little pause on your applications. Now this tip is mainly for some people that are credit card enthusiasts that are applying for five, six, seven, eight new cards a year. Those are the types of people that if you're gonna be applying for a really big loan, just put a little break, just pump the brakes on applying for new cards. But I would also suggest this for the person that is listening to this video that just is gonna get a new card this year, but you know you have this big request for money coming up in the future, just wait. Just wait until after you get the mortgage approved, just wait until you have to get the auto loan approved before you move forward with credit card applications. This is going to vary by everybody and every circumstance is different. For me personally, I just got approved for an auto loan and I have 
two new credit cards within like the last three or four months. So it did not impact my ability to get the auto loan, but I also have great credit and really good credit history. So your mileage may vary on this tip, but just best to practice wisdom. If I got a loan coming up for a car or a mortgage coming up, I'm just gonna push, put the brake on any new credit card applications. Number nine is to avoid manufactured spend. Now we talked about how to hit sign up bonuses using your natural spending. Spending money you're going to spend anyways. Manufactured spending is kind of a way to cheat the system that credit card companies are onto and if they catch you, they could ban you for life, you won't be a customer and you are out of the credit card game entirely, so do not do this. But an example of manufactured spending would be if I have a card and I need to spend $500 on this card in order to hit the sign up bonus, I'll just go buy $500 of Visa gift cards and then use the gift cards to pay off my credit card. That is what is considered manufactured spending. Credit card companies are onto this trick. It does not work. You will not get the bonus. You will get banned. Don't do it. Do not manufacture spend. And tip number 10, ask yourself, what do you want to gain from credit cards? What do you wanna gain from credit cards? Do you want cash back? Do you wanna travel? Are you the type of person that just wants to manage three card setup or do you want like a 10 card setup? The reality is you might not even know. Like if you're watching this video, you might not know if you wanna live in one ecosystem like Chase or American Express or City, or you wanna be the type of person that has cards in every one of those. But I hope that as you begin to learn these tips and get your own cards and watch more of my content and watch more of my videos, you're gonna figure that out. But make sure as you progress along, you'll be able to answer this question, what do I wanna gain? What type of credit card person do I want to be? You need to have a clear vision of where you wanna go with this, and I know that there are gonna be credit cards to accommodate that vision. All right, well, that's all I have for today. These are my top 10 tips for maximizing credit cards. Thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you next time.